Hey, it's Krusty uh, again. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I I'm actually uh, I am recording my voice just because I feel like through my microphone audio quality. Yo, cool. nice so wallpaper. Nice background. All right. Okay. Subtle. <laughs> subtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. We ready to start? We are, here, we are on the, the third and final Swag Academy presentation of the day. Yeah, it's a shame that uh, people left because I, I feel I feel like this is gonna be a really good one for hey, me. Crusty, my boys. Crusty, don't worry about it. All right, this is gonna be a spectacular edit. Everyone's gonna, mm -hmm. everyone's gonna. This is gonna be our next ten thousand view. We, first, it was cocaine planes. Now it's gonna be whatever this is. Are you oh, streaming yeah. it? Well, on... when you're opening it up, uh, viewing our tier three subs. I mean, listen, it's already set up to be a banger. We do not mm. own any tier three subs. We have we have one. Tier two times two sub, which is technically <laughs> a tier four. What are, you, what are you talking about? I'm looking at one right now. Who? Uh, he's sitting on a seat. There's the uh, the queen right <laughs> there. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> mod mod versus Twitch streamer. He mods. Who have you know that I have brought my waifu pelly, uh, uh, pillow to the class Hello, today? My waifu pillow. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, because today's topic is very important and it has so much impact on history. Uh, today we talk about anime girls. Oh fuck yeah! Here we go. How, yeah. How, how? And when? I, <laughs> and when I mean anime girls, I mean anime girls who are battleships. Uh, and okay. when I mean anime girls are battleships, I actually mean. Battleships. God, he had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Damn, yeah. And when I mean battleships, I mean World War II. <laughs> and by World War II. It I always mean... it always comes back to World War Two. <laughs> so the so the battle I'm gonna talk about today, I, I just want to actually make some uh, uh two points here. One, there's gonna be an an event that occurs, and if you know history and you know about this battle that's gonna happen. I know you're going to point it out in the chat that, like, wait, that didn't happen. It's for plot purposes, it's for people who don't know. So please do not make any spoilers in the chat. And if, if you're one of the Swag Academy members, please, if you know, don't spoil it. Um, and the second point I want to make about uh, make was I was originally going to do like a top 15 uh, battles that were like just goofy. And then this battle I was I'm bringing up now was like in my number two or number three. And then I did like a bit more research, and you know the Ratatouille meme, or when he like looks at the paper and he's like, yes. "What the fuck?" Yeah, it essentially became that. The battle I'm going to talk about today is like the most anime bullshit <laughs> I have ever seen and heard and researched. Like I can't even like reading it was like, wait, huh? Um, but I have to give a little bit of context, as all history events uh, require it. And don't worry, today we are not talking about any uh child emperors or child kings uh, everyone in the story is at least 12 years old mm -hmm. yes i can guarantee you that uh so something that we're all familiar with uh december 7th 1941 a day that will live in infamy um oh americans are probably more familiar with this uh, than anybody this was the entry into world war ii um it, it it's brought up in european history but uh, what I don't know if Americans are taught this, but Pearl Harbor was not the only event that occurred on December 7th, 1941. In fact, uh, it, it was a bit bigger than that. In fact, Japan attacked Manila, Wake Islands, Guam, Gilbert Islands, Thailand, <laughs> Malaya, uh, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Is this, is this an instance of, like, everyone got attacked? But the United States was like, we were the important one. Actual door it's, drop. It's, it kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, the, 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 all the attacks were pretty bad. And it was also the declaration of war on uh, the rest of the Allies during the war. Like, America was like, oh, wait, we're in this war? And, like, the rest of the world was like, uh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, like, after three years of fighting, uh, and, like, like the, the, the British were kind of like, yeah, we know this was going to happen, <laughs> and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so Japan, in, like, a matter of weeks from December 7th and a bit onwards, in a matter of weeks, went from, like, looking like this to 
looking like this. <laughs> what am I looking at here? What country is this? <laughs> this... <laughs> they, took, they stole New Zealand? Not not yet. That's not New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, no, that's way Zealand. further down. <laughs> I, 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 if, you, if you want like a clear guess, like most of this was already taken, but essentially they took uh, a lot of this, a lot of this, a lot of this, 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 this. this. Land wise, they took about, within a couple of weeks, around three times the size of Europe. Wow. And and uh, when it comes to, like, ocean territory, because, like, lots of islands, but if you get an island, you can essentially claim, like, ocean territory. It's about three times the size of Europe and the U.S. combined. This isn't, uh, this has nothing to do with the Qing Empire. Uh, have... Well, hey, if you... If you want to connect the like the storylines, yeah. um, our boy Henry, he's up here somewhere. Oh, okay. So he actually is around right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he's running this he's running this place here. Got it. Um, Manchuko. Yeah. So um, yeah. Uh, 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 this is not about the UK, um, but just to give like a clear like a lot of this belongs to the UK, um, <laughs> and essentially the UK attitude was we can't really do anything about it. Um, <laughs> so Britain's uh. uh Essentially, policy was like, well, let kind of the colonies deal with themselves, um, especially like the Australia one, because they were literally on the border of Australia, and Australia had only 10,000 men to defend the entire island of this, Australia. This is where the Bob Semple tank comes in. Oh, you, you. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Spoiler. It's only a, it's only a small, it's only a tight, like one slide. I thought I'd make a, like, you, how, I don't know how you, you I mean, Tim are like on the same wavelength because that was like a, a, no 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 it, it's like a micro joke that I put into this presentation but like it wasn't actually Australian it was New Zealand same shared yeah. brain cell <laughs> but they had they had a super weapon that was the Bob Sample tank <laughs> <laughs> oh my fuck. I've seen this before I didn't know that was what it was called I've seen this what is this that's fucking well, brilliant well technically it's a tractor. But it is also a tank. It's the kill. <laughs> it's the mini kill dozer. <laughs> what I like is like the little gun at the back. <laughs> it is so cute. But yeah, one um, grenade will ruin the day. <laughs> yeah, when you put your shed on tracks, like essentially what it is. Hey, um, this tank this is, this appears to have. Dozer. This appears to have more guns than most tanks. Yeah, I, that'd be true, but I don't know if the gun the guns would do much damage. <laughs> if, if, if I'll say those, like, if you notice, <laughs> none of those guns are larger than probably fifty caliber at most, whereas the oh, tank yeah. guns can like rip holes of buildings. Sure. Wait. So is this is this one guy in there, and he just has to switch to each gun? <laughs> like the enemy's on our right side, and he just gets up from the controls, <laughs> puts a brick on the gas pedal, and switches to the other gun. <laughs> I considering this thing didn't reach mass production and oh, the guy was like I trying to, to the try the guy was trying to sell it so much like so badly. I'm sure like he was giving like going to military presentations like look at it do it like he was doing literally like brick on the I wanna I wanna <laughs> uncover the Frillinger archives of the Bob Semple tank being put on a show floor. <laughs> oh yeah. Um so yeah, there's a lot of events that happened like on the day that day where with Pearl Harbor, but essentially the American one, the American event uh, was was kind of the important one um, because of like how bad it was. Uh, on that day, they lost twenty one ships, one hundred eighty eight aircraft, and around 2,403 2, Americans. Um, and this wasn't really good. Like, if it was like if this if this was nineteen forty four. This wouldn't be too bad, but let's put this in perspective now over the Pacific Fleet. And I just want to clarify to everybody, this is a Pacific Fleet on the Atlantic Fleet. Uh, I consider them different because going for the uh, Panama Canal uh, is not as easy as you think, and it'll take months to do. Uh, so, Japan. You have 10 carriers, 9 battleships, more planes, and they're more modern. Total? The U.S. Yeah, total. Uh, the U.S. Four carriers, zero battleships, less planes. They already ship. This is so. Oh, yeah. So the 
uh, the whole like mastermind of Pearl Harbor was done by this guy, Admiral Yamamoto, who, funny enough, uh, I might have to go quickly back one second. Uh, technically speaking, the battleship named after him is this anime character. That's just <laughs> <laughs> the anime's char- anime character's name. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. anyway. So... Uh, Yamayoto is almost also famous for the speech, well, sorry, this quote, and I couldn't confirm the quote's real or not because a lot of sites say it, it, it's real and some don't. I, there's a book that said it was real and it didn't, but it's a very famous quote and it's probably the most used quote ever. If, any Pacific War film you find, this quote will be mentioned. Um, and it's the very much, I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleepy Joe and fill him with a terrible memory loss. <laughs> <laughs> Waking a sleepy okay. Joe may have done memory loss. I don't think so because he won't shut the fuck up about Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, I bring it up as well. So we're gonna be our first f- four protagonists of our story right now. Our first one is the USS Lexington. The next one, the USS Enterprise. The next one, the USS Yorktown. And the next one, the USS Hornet. Now, uh, we'll start with the USS Enterprise and USS Hornet. Uh, nothing more detailed. It's just a little bit of, like, this needs to be told before we get into context of the battle that's about to happen. Um, so, the Doolittle Raids was, like, after Pearl Harbor, it was like, okay, how do we, like, make the Japanese cry? Um, <laughs> we, we send, like, the USS Hornet, and essentially, we'll make a one-way trip over Tokyo, bomb Tokyo, fly to China, ditch the planes, essentially. Um, and, like, this was kind of a big deal because they managed to get bombers, which were aircraft a bit too big for aircraft carriers, to take off aircraft, cra- aircraft carriers. And they spent ages, like, trying to teach the pilots how to take off with these, with these bombers. Um, they never taught them how to land the, the bombers on the aircraft carrier because that was not important. <laughs> it was, oh. you're, you're not coming back from this mission. But... <laughs> now I'm sure it figured out on your own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, the Doodle Rays didn't actually do that much damage. Uh, it was the first time, like, the U.S. technically, you could argue Mongolia, but it was the first time the U.S. Uh, and an outside, an outside country had attacked, uh, like, the internal uh, integrity of Japan. Um, and, like, here's, like, a really pixelated photo. It's just the other high-quality one was a, uh, one of those web images i couldn't like, i'm, put I'm into looking for like the unregistered bandicam logo above this <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but like yeah just, they bombed they bombed tokyo and this was not so much like the the issue wasn't like the safety of civilians it was more to do with the uh the emperor and i have a little brief uh like thing here uh so like the army and navy hated each other throughout the in t- the entirety of the Japanese Empire, because like they would both have to fight for resources. Don't ask how much resources the Air Force got, because they got none. Um, that's why like they had to resort to kamikaze pilots. But essentially, like the Army and the Navy were like constantly fighting for materials and and, and money and stuff like that. But and it essentially, actually, like made the war effort uh, really inefficient, and actually like cost Japan a lot of time and wasted resources. But uh, when the emperor's palace uh, had a like bomb detonated, essentially in their like the in the area, um, they finally decided to join forces <laughs> because protecting the emperor was the most important thing. Like I don't know what could have united them except the U.S. attacking the emperor's palace, um, and so they both decided that the U.S. Navy was the biggest threat. And so they gave all the resources to the Navy, essentially. Um, while this is happening, um, the Battle of the Coral Reef was going to occur because the Japanese, I don't even see New Gu- where New Guinea is. I don't even see my mouse. Um, yeah. New Guinea it. is where, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, Port Mosby was the essentially the target for the Japanese uh, Navy. They had free aircraft carriers heading towards there. The idea was you take Port Moresby, you can have it essentially invade all of Australia, um, considering you only had ten thousand soldiers there. Right. Yeah. Australia, like, much like Russia, Australia looks really big, but the livable area and like size of the <laughs> army there is comparatively t- 
tiny versus Japan is this densely packed militant nation at this point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. And so the US was like, yeah, we're not going to cut off our lifeline with Australia. We need it so we can take back New Guinea. Um, but we, we, uh, we need to send uh, the aircraft carriers there. So they send the, not the Hornet and the Enterprise. Wait, wait, Krusty, Manuel in chat just said, somehow Hirohito has returned. <laughs> Good one. Oh, I love that. I love that Fucking so much. Got him. That's so good. That's actually so good. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, the U.S. was like, we're not going to let that happen. We're going to send the uh, USS Yorktown and the USS Lexington uh, to defend Port Mosby. Um, you may be surprised. This doesn't really go in the Americans' favor. They do stop the Japanese taking Port Mosby, but they lose two of their aircraft carriers. Now, just want to remind everybody, no spoilers. Thank you. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Got it. Uh, essentially, Japan is like, yes, we've cut their entire air, uh, carrier uh, fleet in half. They only have two aircraft carriers to go, that being the Enterprise and Hornet that are in the north. You couldn't reach it in time. And they know that the U.S. Enterprise and U.S. Hornet are not going to be able to make it to their master, uh, their master battle plan. And so all is set up for this ultimate defeat of the u.s uh dominance in the pacific and when i say like this is like an anime like fight or like an anime episode it, like it plays out just like an Yu-Gi-Oh episode i'm not even kidding you have it like, is full attention <laughs> it, right. it is literally like like hmm yes i assumed you would do that <laughs> but you know I already knew you were doing that, so I did this, and then it's like, mm, yeah. if only I could have predicted this. Wait, but I did. And then, like, it's just like, none, yeah, but, yeah. Um, and the battle I am referring to, and this is where really like the, I want the inter I wish I had the interstellar like horns coming out. Yeah, I'll get the it. Battle of Midway. Hell yeah. Um, uh, one of the most famous battles in World War II. However, I feel like when pe I talk to people about Battle of Midway, they don't actually know what happened in this battle. Like, I, like even I, I, I'm guilty of this. I knew ba the Battle of Midway, uh, Midway was significant and like one of the most important US naval battles. But then when reading like the events that occurred during this battle, I was like, my mouth was open during the entire like research period, like going, there is no way this shit is real. <laughs> like oh, it is insane. So let's get into it real quick. Uh, Midway, it's an island. It has a runway on it. It's an air force base. Really good for lifting off planes. It's essentially an unsinkable aircraft carrier. I was about, I was about yeah. to say exactly that. I was like, this looks like if an aircraft carrier was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it can't move, but it it it, it can lift off planes in the ocean. Uh, so. As essentially unsinkable aircraft carrier. Where is it located? In the Pacific, not too far from uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. It's kind of the middle of nowhere. It is. It is in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. Uh, so this is the Japanese you could, plan. And I'm you gonna, could I'm say it's a good way between the US and Japan. Oh. 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 Whoa. 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 Lore drop. Lore drop. Yeah. I was going to say as well, like, between, like, they consider it close to Hawaii, but, like, from Hawaii to Midway, it almost feels like coastline with China to, like, like mid-China. <laughs> like, it's, it's quite far. Um, but this is, I'm going to tell this kind of, like, from the Japanese perspective, because I feel like it has the best uh, story structure with it. Um, so the Japanese plan, and I know this is not a battle plan here, it's like a map of the Hawaiian Islands, but best way I can explain to you is the Japanese are going to do a full strike and attack on the uh, Air Force Base of Midway and destroy their air fleet um, and essentially take over the island. This allows them to, like, island hop all the way to Hawaii. They think that the two aircraft carriers that the U.S. has left is in uh, Pearl Harbor or in like, Hawaii, right? And it would take them over 24 hours 
to get to there. So they're betting on the fact they can take Midway in one day. And once they've taken Midway, they've won this entire situation, like this entire operation. So the battle starts and the Japanese come flying in. We're talking like bombs, you know, full on like dive bombing onto the runway. But something is wrong. Um, where they think the planes are going to be, which is like normally when you're preparing for a battle or like at least like on high alert, your planes are going to be parked right around the runway so they can take off really quickly. However, there are no planes. <laughs> <laughs> and nice the, slide, nice slide. <laughs> and the, the, the Japanese reaction was kind of like... Um, uh, there are supposed to be planes here? Uh, reason why is the Americans had actually been uh, dissecting the code, the naval code that the uh, Japanese had been like transmitting and stuff, and knew exactly they were going to attack Midway at that specific time and day. Um, and this is uh, like this was actually like really important as well because when you transcribe uh, like codes and stuff, how we did it in Europe and the UK was. When we got, we understood like what the code said, we wouldn't actually tell anybody about it because the idea is if you actually say, okay, uh, the, the Germans, hey, we, we would go, this is how they would in the UK. Uh, hey, Soviets, Germans are going to attack at this time, this day. You got to move all your troops away and like, you know, uh, and avoid the attack or whatever, right? And then they do that and the Germans go, okay, it's impossible that they would know we were going to attack. So they obviously hack our, our codes. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't that a whole yeah. thing? Once, um, what was it? Alan Turing cracked the the Nazi code. They had to like pick and choose which intel they would mm -hmm. actually act on. Yeah, like, exactly. Like thousands of preventable deaths, but it could have cost them the war if they like showed their hand. It, it, exactly. Yeah, and it was like the idea of like the way they had to do it was, oh, um, well, technically speaking, the supply for the supplies for the German like front it arrives at eleven o'clock. So if you attacked at ten, you might have an advantage at like small little details like that. And then the Germans wouldn't like get suspicious. Uh, however, with this battle, it was the U.S. was like, okay, we attack, um, like before, we attack um, right at the time that they attack. The Japanese will know that we broke their codes, so. We need to win this battle badly, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna risk that. We're gonna risk like knowing, letting the Japanese know that we've broken their codes because this battle meant everything. If those two tech carriers are gone, uh, that's like the Pacific essentially gone. There's no air field to fly from. You know, uh, Japan can like launch attacks on San Francisco, LA, um, across the East Coast. Um. So, where was the naval? Uh, where, where, where was the air force on the island of Midway? Uh, it was off attacking the Japanese fleet. However, no, Nani, Nani, Aww. yes, you say that though. Well, it was very much the Japanese going like Nani. What they know they're we're here. Huh? Funny enough, they didn't actually realize that they had broken the code at this point. But there was kind of like, oh, that's that's kind of suspicious. This was not a good attack by the Americans. So, like I said, um, planes were shit. Pilots weren't really well trained. Uh, torpedoes barely worked ever. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, uh, it actually went so bad. With all the planes attacking their targets, zero targets were hit. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, hey, those are those are F twenty two numbers right there. Seven <laughs> percent. Yeah. I'd, 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 I'd say that's a suboptimal result. Yeah. Oh. So this important part uh, is, and this will be kind of repetitive. Uh, so the, the major issue of Japan is it had to decide whether it needs to arm itself with torpedoes or bombs. Now, if you're attacking Midway and thinking there's no navy there at all. Um, you're going to use bombs because you don't need torpedoes to sink any like no existing ships. But if you're attacking naval uh, vessels, you need torpedoes, right? Um, so Japan had armed all their aircraft with bombs, thinking, well, it's just an island. There's no ships around. We're just going to go and take it uh, and like bomb the shit out of them. Um, this is the first like nani fa oh fuck moment. 
<laughs> of like this battle, and there are many to come. So, scouts uh, managed to spot a single aircraft carrier. Didn't know which ex exact one, but what they weren't aware that like teleports behind you nothing personal kid that both the aircraft carriers knew exactly they were going to arrive at, at midway and actually left pearl harbor like two days earlier to prepare for this battle which was hilarious because the japanese had planned their entire uh basis that the carriers were going to be at pearl harbor so like you could even see this battle map planned japanese movement here actual japanese movement Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In fact, it's a very funny story, and I'll be mentioning this movie um, often because it's actually surprisingly accurate. It's a movie Midway that came out in 2019. But there's a scene that actually brings this up. Um, essentially, they had like these war games in their ships, and they. What I don't like about like how the Japanese doctrine works is normally you would have like the admirals or like the top guys, uh, BV essentially like the underdog while the the not actually no so other way around they'd be the the like more powerful fleet and then the the younger guy would be like the the weaker uh weaker one so the idea is that like if you if the if you could find a way essentially to breach the more stronger fleet then you know you've got a key to victory but the uh, japanese did it differently where they make the juniors which is like these two guys these guys here um made the juniors like the americans and the Japanese fleet admirals as, like, the Japanese. And when they did, like, a war games a month previous, um, the Japanese juniors won as the Americans. And the, Jap uh, the Japanese admiral, like, over here is like, okay, like, what happened? Like, how does this happen? And <laughs> the Japanese juniors went, oh, uh, well, we expected that the, the, that the uh, aircraft carriers were going to be at Midway. <laughs> and, we just and then like the yeah like the japanese admirals anticipate that yeah the japanese admirals were like no it's 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 impossible like they couldn't have smart us like this like you know like there's no way they could predict when we're going to attack and then like the japanese admirals like yeah do it again but you're not allowed to use aircraft carriers <laughs> so, so the japanese predicted the exact attack the u.s was going to do and they went yeah no nah, that's not gonna happen that's ridiculous <laughs> yeah um so now that they found out that there are aircraft carriers they had to to rethink their strategy okay bombs torpedoes which one do we go with do i use my entire air force fleet right now i can do it right this second and send them off to midway and bomb midway or do i wait and allow my planes to be re uh, uh reintegrated with torpedoes so you know uh we can sink the, the ships and this will become important later um while this is happening uh i gotta go for my notes here <laughs> um then uss nautilus um is like sailing around on the water it's a little submarine u-boat thing um and it's just like you know vibing you know looking out for stuff just chilling. uh yeah just chilling all of a sudden like uh, uh, goes above water and is in like the middle of the japanese fleet oh, wait and... what <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. like the japanese know he's there and they, it, it, you'll be surprised how hard it is to hit a submarine you can release death charges but like you can't really aim with those uh, planes can launch torpedoes, but like I said, the Japanese weren't really in a position to launch torpedoes. Um, speaking of, Japan decided to be patient and reinstall the planes with torpedoes. That the is also concern... what I was going to suggest. Yeah, the main concern is the Navy. We got to get rid of the Navy. Actually, probably the smartest move. Because like, you could bomb the shadow midway, but you can't do anything as a Navy around it. Um, here's the thing. We're going to go to our second Nani moment here. Um, scout plane flying around. And he's like... This is a Japanese he, or American he, scout plane? Uh, Japanese scout plane, sorry. Okay. Uh, you can tell by the red sun, which I didn't come want to assume, but I later. figured. <laughs> yeah, this will, this will actually come in a bit later. Um, yeah, so Japanese scout plane, and he sees something. He sees something that he can kind of not believe. <laughs> same guy, same reaction. Same guy, <laughs> just same reaction. He cannot believe. So he can finally can confirm that there are two aircraft carriers, which is uh, the 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 yeah. the Hornet and the Enterprise. However, 
Not only does he spot these two, he spots the Yorktown who was <laughs> sunk in the Coral Sea. <laughs> she survived. She made it out there alive. Now this I ship, live, bitch. yeah, this ship has been memed in World War II communities for years, and like just like the base of Mount Lake, the Yorktown just showing up <laughs> last minute the battle, like. <laughs> The idea was that it wasn't sunk, but it was like heavily damaged, but the Japanese thought it was sunk. Nimitz, who I actually don't really have in this presentation, I wish like I did have more of him, but I need to save some time. Nimitz like was looking over the, the inspection, like the, the remaking of it, and they're like, oh yeah, we can get it done in like two weeks or so. And he's like, you got three days. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And as they're like sailing off to Midway, they were still like building it. <laughs> Like, still hammering stuff together and shit. Um, but yeah, so now that the mid the Battle of Midway started, uh, America surprisingly found itself on even even playing field because, as I said, Japan, for this battle specifically, they, their other carriers are doing other things around the world. They had four carriers and, like, better planes and all that stuff. Um, but the U.S. also found themselves having four carriers um, including the Plus island. Plus an island, yeah. <laughs> Midway, um, the greatest carrier. Yeah. The unsinkable yeah, the carrier. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, so now they get free carry. And, but this is the reaction of J Japanese going like, wait, the Yorktown survived? What the fuck? So, like I said before, the only advantage really, though, because they still, like, obviously Midway, a carrier, but, uh, like, Japanese could, like, launch an attack from far away. Um, so, he, like, it was three versus four, kind of, but the advantage that the Americans also had was that J Japan had to change its plans, like I said before, and so they're kind of improvising this, on this entire thing from now on. Um, so, the first, uh, the first, like, attack by the Americans was done by a bunch of naval uh, torpedo uh, aircraft, and... This is where our first clip, I got to pull out, like, you know when your teacher pulls the TV out? <laughs> it, and like, I'll get I'll, someone strong in the class, come and pull the TV for me. And put, turn the VCR for me. Um, yeah. Um, this is where I, like, have my first clip. I'm not going to show on stream because I'll copyright put a, I'll stuff. I'll put a link to it in the... Send me a, I, 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 send I'll, me I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Uh, uh, copy link. Uh, but I also put the actual video in the Discord so everybody can see it it's in this it'll be in the swag academy um thing but don't click the link because it's like a, the long a long video or a long version i have it i have a cut version of it um sure. uh, clip one there you go uh this is to show you how suicidal torpedo uh capabilities were in the u.s navy like they didn't work and also a torpedo mission was suicidal There for the chat for anyone who wants to watch along with us. Oh my god. Actually insane. Oh yeah, by the way, that uh you'll see at the end, uh that torpedo misses because once again, no targets were hit. In the first wave. <laughs> again. Again. Um that is a scary clip. Yeah. Oh, it, get, it, it gets it gets worse. It gets worse. Trust me. <laughs> so, this first attack was really bad uh, for the Americans. Um, out of oh nope no you don't. Out of forty nine torpedo bombers, thirty five were shot down without hitting a single target. Um, Epic. Yeah. So <laughs> the second wave uh, attempts an attack. Uh, this time, though, it is dive bombers. Um, while dive, bo dive bombers had a better chance of hitting their target, the target uh, or the target would probably face less damage if hit. However, uh, when the dive bombers tried to reach the Japanese navy, uh, the Japanese navy had kind of like yeeted out and was missing, and they couldn't really find it. Um. You know, as a, as, as you do, player. yeah. However, when they did like a box search of the area, they managed to glimpsely like find the uh, Arash, uh, Arashi, 
which is like a little mini cruiser. And they suspected that if it's all by itself, it was probably holding the back line and it's now making its way towards the fleet. Okay, why don't we just head towards where the same direction that the Arashi's going? I mean, they might find the entire Japanese fleet, who knows? <laughs> um, right as the Japanese had finally prepared like some of their aircraft with the torpedoes needed, but still going through maintenance, um, the U.S. dive bombers have arrived. Surprise attack, bitch. Um, and this is where uh, things get interesting. Um, they all kind of dis all the naval ships kind of dispersed, and the aircraft carrier uh, Naguma uh, was le kind of left defenseless. Uh, but there's a really important like thing about this event that happened, and this all includes a man called Richard Hazley Best. Kind of like, some say the best pilot ever. Yeah. I say really just fucking lucky. He was Smash. definitely the Richard Haley Halesy best. Best, yeah. yeah. <laughs> his look, his uniform had the name Best right on his chest. We couldn't find a better candidate. <laughs> Even like yeah, researching well, this, I'm like, oh, maybe this guy's the best. And I'm like, no, he's just really lucky. Oh, look, all um, I want to say is, if you if you cut out his name and give his nickname, he's he's Dick Best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. That means yep. in a in a call sheet where it's last name first name, Best Dick. Best Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the Dick game is strong with this man. This, yeah, Best Dick. I will start calling him that from now on. Um, so essentially, like how uh. Diving works in the navy uh, in naval bombers, or sorry, naval yeah, naval dive bombers, is if there is more than one carrier, then a naval squadron will split up, and one will go for one, and the other, you know, go for the other, right? But they made a fatal mistake because they only saw one aircraft carrier at first, which was the Akage, which was the essentially head of the fleet, um, and. Richard saw it, realized they had fucked up, and because they were all going for the other carrier, which was the uh, this one here, uh, the <clears throat> Naguma. And so he took two other aircraft with him, kind of like, all right, boys, we're going, we're going on a side mission for the main aircraft carrier. Um, to explain dive bombing, it's a very dangerous experience. You start at 18,000 feet. You then, like, kind of pitch down to around 8,000 feet. So that's another 10,000 feet uh, to increase your airspeed. So you're already going really fast. Because you need to drop then, to a higher density of air, right? Mm hmm. Cause, and also, you have to leave your windows, your cockpit entirely open when you get to around 8,000 feet because it will, the condensation will block your view. And also, if you crash, you can escape easier because the cockpit was most likely to have jammed and you would drown. Um, then you would either do two things, you just go straight down, or you turn upside down and then go down because it just was more efficient. Um, and then you essentially go directly to, towards the target. Now, I want to explain something. When you're going straight down at a 70 degree angle, and let's say you're an aircraft uh, aircraft uh, anti-air gunner, and you look up, the target is almost still. So you essentially have a non-moving target to shoot at. Meaning your chances of surviving that, uh, if you as the pilot uh, going down, the chances of you surviving is very, very small. And once you've actually managed it, just not only survive getting down there, but reaching 2,000 feet, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, some pilots in this battle broke that like recommendation completely, um, and do a four G pullout afterwards while still not getting hit at, at, from anti air guns. Um, it was almost impossible for a lot of pilots, especially in this period of the war. Um, however, uh, essentially the Arasashi. Uh, oh no, sorry, not Arasashi. Um, the blah, 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 blah. names are really like Akagi. Sorry, uh, the, the Akagi and actually the other air aircraft carriers as well 
Um, because they were trying to still get torpedoes onto the aircraft carrier, um, they had to move the, air, uh, the, the like torpedoes through the upper decks of the carrier, uh, which is a big no-no when you're in a battle. Because most of the time, the ammunition is kept like deep in the core of the ship, so it's protected from any like battle or whatever. The, you know, the exploding. Yeah, the exploding. Um, so uh, this did not end well, and this is where our second clip in. Only another like thirty seconds as well. Um, our second clip comes in just to show you how terrifying this experience was, but also how uh, much of a badass uh, best dick was. Uh, uh, yeah yeah this this, uh this was actually very close to like what essentially he had to do uh out of the three bombers they all survived but two of the bombs missed their target and he was the last one standing let me see oh my god (laughs) jesus I'm like I'm a little delayed. I can here. I can I can play this one. It's short enough. I can play this one for the stream. Let's turn the music off for it though. This this whole battle. I'd like to make a comment. I know we're, like we're intersplicing this with like movie clips and whatnot, but okay. it seriously feels like this was a movie script first, <laughs> then it was the war, yeah. not the yeah, other way exactly. around. It was. Well, a... You know what's what, what's funny is about this movie Midway. Uh, got like negative reviews because people were saying you're hollow white, hollow Hollywood. Well, I don't even know where they're making the film very Hollywood. Yeah. And then I and I felt the same when I watched the film. And then I went and did like read the transcripts of the pilots and everything that happened. I went, oh no, they did this stuff. <laughs> oh, actually, lore accurate. They don't know and, what they're talking about. And what's funny is it, it still gets crazier. So <laughs> like, it still Great. gets way nuttier. Um. So, yeah, skip the video here. Don't do that. Um, yeah, so they, so you, you know I mentioned that like, they were moving ammunition on the top bunk, uh, bunker of the ship. Uh, bomb goes through. Bombs don't, don't normally do too much damage to a ship, but the bomb went straight through into where the ammunition is. Inferno. Uh, that is the head of the Japanese fleet destroyed. Absolutely uh, on fire. Mm-hmm. Gone. Yeah. Man. Um, but if I told you that many other there's other like attacks on other of the carriers in the fleet, they were all doing the same thing with moving um, gels and stuff, and they all caught on fire. And they all had to get abandoned. So, right. except from the last ship that managed to escape. A Hiryu. A Hiryu. Hiryu. Yeah. Um, but essentially, this was the last aircraft carrier standing. Within one battle, three aircraft carriers were made essentially useless. Which is unheard in human history. <laughs> <laughs> this actually <laughs> happened. This is like, essentially, like, not all of them were like explosions, but because bomb goes through, uh, Leaks happen with like fuel and stuff, and like the stuff that's in missiles, and then catches on fire because something else is on fire. Ship goes on fire. Everybody has to evacuate. Ship is sunk essentially because or abandoned. I think. Um, I think you you might mention this, Krusty. Meryl Marauder in the chat said, "Did he aim for the big red dot?" Yeah. This <laughs> comes later. Yeah. Now, and I had like a whole joke about it. You'll see, you'll see it. It's in okay. the end. Okay. You'll see it. <laughs> um so here is the last ship, uh that was sorry, last it's not last ship. It's got still got a fleet uh, supporting it, but the last aircraft carrier uh that Japan has. So Japan went from having four aircraft carriers to now only having one. Um but this also didn't deter Japan. Japan was still very confident and was like, "No, we can still win this. We can do this." You know, a lot of copium. So, um, so can I ask a question about tactics real quick? Uh, of course. It, during during a fight like this, where you have aircraft carriers on the ocean, uh, with aircraft in the air, is it possible for aircraft to land, refuel, resupply, and take off again during a fight? Very unlikely during a fight because mostly, like it, it'd be kind of like very terrifying. It, it has happened. Um, 
just not as common. But yeah, the idea is what you, what you do is you keep planes back. So when the planes come back into land, you send another uh, group of aircraft to lift off, essentially. Oh, okay. So it would only be like, even if there were 50 planes in a conflict, only 10 of them would be in the sky at any given point, and they would land and launch a new replacement? Yeah, yeah, essentially. Depending on the battle, it'll be different numbers and different... Well, yeah, oh, which yeah. we. Yeah, which so we'll get the, to because so the threat oh. the threat that an aircraft carrier poses isn't like being able to support airplanes. It's that it will continue launching airplanes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, think of like the uh, like Makes the sense. the Star Wars like you know the what are you called not uh, the Tie Fighters. Yeah, like the Tie Fighters with like the the not Death Star but the ever smaller ones like oh the sure ships, the, the, Star Destroyers yeah. launching Star Destroyers. Tie Fighters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, the hero, like, is actually, the crew on that are, like, really confident because Japan was, like, on this concept of, oh, no, we'll win. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, they send out a fleet straight away uh, to go and hunt down uh, an aircraft carrier. And they just so happen to find the Yorktown. <laughs> um, and they do a raid on it. And the Yorktown crew actually did a really good, uh, really clever thing about... Uh, Fuel it like uh, what was it putting carbon dioxide in the fuel load? I can't remember the reason why, but the idea was to prevent like fire spreading across the ship and stuff. Yeah, they could they could uh, like suffocate the fire before it spread. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Um, but sadly, it's the end of the story for the Yorktown. No, because it stinks. <laughs> yeah, it's such a sad story. Did it sink? Um, did, did it sink, or is it like sunk, like last time? Um, it sunk. No, it sunk this time. Oh, oh for real? Uh, for yes, real. Okay. yes, Night Dragon. We are talking about Midway. <laughs> <laughs> for real, it it is sunk. So Japanese, like hell yeah, okay, we gotta go for a second round, baby. We're gonna find another aircraft carrier. If we can get down, get them down to one, we will win this battle. So they go out and search for another aircraft carrier, and what they see. Um, completely confuses them. <laughs> I love because... the usage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Because they're looking at an aircraft carrier and they're thinking it's the Enterprise. However, it's the Yorktown BB! <laughs> 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 it was it was just a scratch it was nothing this is what unsinkable looks like okay i'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest right now i i did not mean to like hint at it coming back i thought it was actually something i was making a funny joke not like pretending to know the future i'll be honest that no, time. i was convinced i thought it was gone me too yeah yeah the idea, the the thing was as well. Japan was constantly getting confused during like during this battle of which aircraft carrier was which, but always ended up trying to attack the the your town. <laughs> <laughs> it was just constantly being bombarded. Um, so they they did a they did their like a uh, second major wave. There's like a bunch of smaller ones, but they did the second major one, and sadly. Re and the real this time, really, for, really, for real. for real. It, it, it. USS Yorktown being abandoned on Fourth of June, nineteen forty-two. Uh, it, it was abandoned. It was sunk. Sadly, the story sad. is over for the Yorktown. It was a good, uh, wait. <laughs> good run, boys. It was a good run. However, um, a similar thing. Also, like this wasn't actually just for the Yorktown as well. Uh, the Japanese kept com getting confused because they kept thinking they sunk the Enterprise. But it wasn't sunk, and they're going like, "Huh? What? It's not sinking." Wait. Do they and do they know how to sink aircraft carriers? <laughs> like, well, the, the problem with the problem back then is they shoot like a bomb or something through the the, the deck, and then they go, "Oh, they it might as well be sunk then." And then like the engineers are like, "Oh yeah, give it, give me like three hours, I can get this fixed." Um, but the Enterprise has its own like little interesting story with one of its crew members, and this is where I think is like. I was reading this description of like what happened and I lost my shit. Um, this is Bruno Guido, right? Uh, this guy has balls of steel and also just really good at a gun. And this next clip, uh, I would like to show you. I mean, kind of like just hear your reaction. Yeah, to yeah, this. yeah. 
Hero. I, yeah. I think as long as I play it, like I don't full screen it, I think I can play these in, in the stream. Yeah. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it's only for like 40 seconds or whatever. Alright, I'm pulling this one, but now. <laughs> How old is so, this movie? Did this come out like, like it's like, yeah, it's like 2019. Yeah, 2019, yeah. So bomb, Japanese bomber has hit engine, turns around, goes to do a kamikaze strike onto the Enterprise. Uh huh. Uh huh. Just keep watching. Yo. What? <laughs> now, I don't know if anybody, everyone's done with the clip. Is that Joe Jonas or am I like? No, wrong? that is one hundred percent Joe it, Jonas. It, it, Absolutely. It Joe Jonas. Yep. <laughs> How the fuck did yeah. he go back in time and do this and perform these feats and then be one of the best bull bands of all time? Bruno Guido confirmed Joe Jonas. How? Yeah. Um, that'll be with the last clip. Sorry, guys, but that's uh, the last clip. That of, is of that's fine. Totally fine. You've inspired me to go watch this. Hey, everyone in the chat, go watch Midway after after watching this. Yeah. Go watch Midway. Yeah, like it got it, here's I I watched it to research this film because people said actually it's like it's surprisingly for a Hollywood film historically accurate. Speaking of, um, that movie that scene you saw probably seemed very Hollywoodized or like very action movie based. I uh, no, uh, uh, it oh no, no, it literally stop. It literally happened. Literally like, shot the engine it, and it crashed across the deck. It crossed across the deck. It. It its wings scratched across the deck as well, splitting his aircraft in half while he was still sat on the gun. And the only reason it spent out is because he shot this. The engine, one of the engines was destroyed already. It was compensating for the turn, so they're kind of like holding it to like the right. He shot the other engine. The aircraft was, then lost control. It went into the other direction, essentially, smashed across the deck, cut him in half. He was still there. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who I remember reading it, and it was one of I can't remember who it was on this end, but yeah, essentially, plane cut in half, survived, and saved the saved the entire enterprise essentially from being, having a kamikaze attack on them. Actual um, fucking Hollywood shit. <laughs> yeah, this is seriously, and, he, and like uh, the story was that like um, the the admiral of that ship, or like the captain of that ship, sorry, um, like as soon as soon as he got off the plane. Oh, uh, captain wants to see you because he, the captain, witnessed essentially all of it, and he's like, "Yes." He's like, "Oh, um, uh, what's your rank?" And he says his rank, uh, second class. And he's like, "Okay, you are now first class." <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's promoted uh, on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but sadly, this like really, like, generally like brave guy uh, had a really sad, a terrible fate. Don't mean to bring it to a dark mode, and I'll go through it really quickly. Uh, not to spoil for the next day, but the next day he was shot down, um, survived, uh, was like on a raft for a while with his, his co-pilot, and then picked up by a Japanese ship. When the Japanese ship uh, took him up, they interrogated him and asked him, okay, what's the American secrets? And he essentially tells them to go fuck themselves. Right. Um, okay. And so, and this is like uh, the, the Japanese mentioned. famously treated their prisoners of war very well. Yeah, yeah, this is another episode of like why the Japanese sucked in World War II. Um, the Japanese dragged him while he's screaming for mercy, attached him to heavy barrels, and threw him over the water. And to this day, we don't know if he died from drowning or died from the pressurization, but like of the depth that he got to with the heavy barrels. Uh, uh it, it, like horrible but he was like given the medal well not given but like he you know how they like decorate posthumously awarded yeah yeah exactly um yeah. but don't worry america's here for revenge baby because the next day after a really sh like long day uh previous they're going for the final attack one more aircraft carrier to go we still got uh two baby we got two aircraft carriers to go and the hero is in our sights. This is the final battle. This will decide who owns the Pacific. Um, there are no surprises in the battle. 
like as in the Japanese were predicting the Americans to attack, the Americans knew the Japanese were going to see them. But the thing is, uh, the, the uh, Americans actually for once had more aircraft. Still shitty aircraft, but more. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, the Japanese were like, yeah, but we know they're coming. Uh, and this is where like the most intense, and I would have shown a video, but like, I just, like, it, it's just too long and I couldn't be bothered. But I got gifts, so it's fine. <laughs> the um the battle commences the japanese and americans see each other and it starts off as you expect the zeros the japanese fighters come in swarming at the air uh, at the uh naval bombers uh it is a fucking clusterfuck like planes like crisscrossing like you you wouldn't even imagine um explosions everywhere and guess who our boys uh the head of in the uh then uh, the dive bomber group. It's our boy Richard Hazley Best, or as we know him, Best Dick. Best Dick. He's back. He's still here, baby. Best Ace comma Dick. <laughs> They're coming in, diving down from eighteen thousand feet, seeing the ships uh, kind of scramble and panic, uh, and they spot the uh, you know oh, the hero. Sorry, and um, this is where like the bit of the meme comes in. Uh, do you notice something about um, <laughs> the aircraft's design? <laughs> Just like an artistic piece. Um, maybe this oh. one will be better. <laughs> uh, if if you're not getting the hint, um, like it's just a big red circle and if any video game has taught you anything, you want to hit that big red circle. <laughs> you want to really hit it. Now, as if it was the end of a Hollywood movie. How do you think they sunk the hero? Carefully. <laughs> they, they didn't aim for the big red dot. They aimed for some other part, surely. <laughs> Please, please tell me that this plays out exactly like, uh, you know, the Death Star has a self-destruct button where, like, not only is this red dot, like, on the ship, but there's something vital right underneath it. So, I can't confirm on the vitalness of it, but I would imagine if they're trying to get armaments ready for the next load of aircraft, because they sent everything they had, there would be a lot of fuel under this red dot. That's all I could say. <sighs> but I can't confirm. <laughs> However... They did aim for the red dot. That's what you need to know. That's what you need to know. And sure, this is a screenshot from a movie. Want proof? There's a proof. The red dot. Oh, yeah, the red dot is gone. Uh, <laughs> it is gone. It was sunk and exploded on fire. The ship had to be abandoned. And the Japanese naval fleet was, well, there's still four more carriers in the upper part of the ocean, mostly in like Indian, Southeast Asia ocean. But Midway was safe. There was no aircraft carriers. The U.S. for once had more aircraft carriers <laughs> in the area. And America had officially <laughs> won the battle. Um, a lot of World War II nerds and history nerds always find this battle hilarious considering how the fuck do you lose four aircraft carriers in one battle, man? <laughs> I guarantee like... any surviving admirals from the Japanese side were probably, like, summarily executed. <laughs> 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 yeah. um so like and you might say okay yeah but america still only has two aircraft carriers well you see at this point in time america was already building five new aircraft carriers almost ready for like being perfectly ready to go off to war and before you knew it the war was over um sure it was this was only took place in 1942 but, you know, think about it, three years later, the war was already over. And my question is, what was the significance of Midway? Now, it's really hard to answer any question with any battle where it's like, what was the significance of, like, Stalingrad or, you know, Battle of Britain or all that stuff, right? But I can guarantee you that if Midway was lost, um, you know, the war could have gone for a couple of years more and millions of more lives would have been lost. Um, some I've seen people some are like argue that like if Midway was lost, the U.S. would have poured more resources into the Navy buildup and and just trying to get Midway back, which would have stopped resources going to the Soviet Union to stop the Nazis reaching Moscow, which would have potentially I don't necessarily believe it, but would potentially lead to the Soviet Union collapsing 
uh, and letting the Nazis essentially win in Europe. So you could argue this is one of the most important battles of the war. Now, to end on like a very light note, Douglas uh, Big I've Balls got, MacArthur. <laughs> I've got I've got a little funny. Uh, oh, and then like a nice wrap up and the ending because I like I always like to end on like nice lessons learned or whatever. Um, so for this lesson, um, or like what what to take from this essentially, uh, comes of a little story in itself. Um, so G January. Uh, 29th, 1944, the Marshall Island operations occur. I uh, don't really need to, need to know too much about them. All you need to know is the Japanese are looking out across the bay, looking for the American Navy. And what they see, they seriously cannot believe. I'm going to let you take a guess. <laughs> Yorktown, Yorktown, Please Yorktown. Please tell me it was the Yorktown. <laughs> It's back, baby. <laughs> right. Well, it wasn't the Yorktown. Damn it. Story ruined. <laughs> Immersion yeah. Ruined. Yeah. However, does anybody remember the Lexington? That the... sunk oh, also at the Coral Yep, Lake? yep. I think so. And it was the Lexington. But also the Yorktown! <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> the immortal ship. Now you're probably wondering because the Yorktown did actually uh, both of these ships actually sunk when they sunk, like but to the bottom of the ocean sunk. Yes, uh, bottom of the ocean sunk. But how is this possible? How could they? Well, this is actually what the Japanese are asking. How the fuck are they? Here? <laughs> like what you might know, know, and like also this has been mean to ship. Um. The U.S. had already been building their replacements before the Battle of Midway even had occurred. Like, they were already, like, outdated enough that we're going to upgrade you. Original one was CV-5, they had to upgrade it with the CV-10. Um, so, they just renamed it the U.S. Yorktown. It looks similar <laughs> in, in, in a sense. But, yeah, Yorktown showed up. And to this day, to this day... You can still go visit the Yorktown. Oh man, I'm so happy. And oh, and to, and, and what you should take away from this is <sighs> the yeah. Yorktown did not only outlive the war and the Japanese Empire. It will likely outlive all of us. <laughs> holy shit, dude! Actually, act holy fucking shit! You're actually activating a uh, a memory of mine. Um, when I used to do an American thing called Boy Scouts, I actually stayed on that ship. Oh my holy god! Shit. I've stepped foot on that thing. Colin, yeah. we need to we yeah. need some Yorktown history. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, Thank that, you. That picture. Holy shit! Yeah, I I I have pictures on my phone of like. Me and my uh, my friends at the time literally standing on top of it. Oh my god! Thank you actually... so much, Manuel, for for joining the alumni tier. He, he, he says in the chat, Yorktown made me become a member. Thank you so Let's much. Let's fucking go! Hell yeah, Manuel! <laughs> the most oh base god. ship, absolutely. Just...